In 2014, the president of Bayern Munich, Jule Hunis, was sentenced to three and a half years in prison for tax fraud. It was claimed to be the most high profile case of tax evasion in German history. But after only serving half his sentence, Uli Hunis came out of prison and ran for re-election as the president of Bayern Munich. And he won the election for president with a landslide victory. He was gonna win because he was the only person running for the presidency. After this, the BBC documentary show Panorama decided to go undercover and see if it could discover any form of corruption at Bayern Munich, in German football, in European football. They sent their agents out, getting jobs in high profile clubs, in high profile positions, working their way in to try and discover and find evidence of any kind of corruption. At the end of the 2017-18 season and after being undercover for almost two years, the investigators for Panorama had discovered one of the biggest cases of corruption in world football history. The investigation team found that for over 15 years, Bayern Munich had been using large secret offshore accounts to pay big sums of money into people's bank accounts. They were paying parents, paying off mortgages, putting large figures into their bank to make sure that their youngster would sign for the Bayern Munich Academy. They were working closely with agents paying large sums of money, some figures reported to be 20 million euros to make sure that when their client's contract ran out, they'd sign for Bayern Munich and not even consider going anywhere else. This plan, although illegal, was brilliant as they were cherry picking the best players from their rivals in their league, making the rivals weaker and Bayern Munich stronger. The president of FIFA and the president of UEFA travelled to Germany to meet the president of the German Football Federation. All three men were determined to come up with a punishment fitting for Bayern Munich. It had to be enough to scare the rest of the footballing world into never doing anything wrong ever again. In the past, teams like Juventus had been relegated only to bounce back without a care in the world and win titles. Other teams like Barcelona had been given a one-year transfer ban. Didn't affect them, bounced back, still won titles. So after a long meeting, the punishment was decided. Bayern Munich were to be fined 150 million euros. That was to be split up equally between the rest of the teams in the Bundesliga as a form of compensation for some of the players they've had snatched away over the years. But they weren't over yet. There was one big punishment to come. They were going to hurt Bayern so much that a whole generation of Bayern fans were going to grow up without seeing any superstars come to the club. They decided to slap Bayern Munich with a 30 year transfer ban. Now there was an outcry in Munich. Bayern fans demonstrated on the streets. They couldn't believe that their team, their club, was not going to be able to buy a player for 30 years. That a whole generation is going to grow up and not see any new players come in apart from players in the academy. They couldn't believe it. They appealed. The appeal was thrown out. The 30 year transfer ban was going to stay. The rest of the league, their arch rivals, celebrated. At last, Bayern Munich's grip on the Bundesliga was going to be over. At last, maybe some other teams could dominate German football. And at last, all of Bayern Munich's enemies could sit back, laugh and watch the team slip down the division, slip down the rankings and fade into history. Well, Carlo Ancelotti was still the head coach. And for the first few years of the transfer ban, he didn't know a thing had happened. They still had a world-class squad. Even though it was getting old, they still picked up title after title. But as each player slowly retired, as Carlo Ancelotti decided to fade off into the distance, so did the club. They tried to stay at the top. They brought in big coaches. First, they brought in Jurgen Klopp, ex Dortmund manager. He couldn't do anything, he couldn't win anything, he couldn't change these youngsters into world-class players, and he struggled. Next was Mauricio Pochettino. Again, big manager who could work with young players. He struggled. The team was really starting to slip down the divisions and slip down the rankings. Now for the next 10 years, the coach quality that was coming into Bayern Munich was getting less and less as the club itself became less and less important in German football. No longer were they a dominant force. And in 2034, the team was relegated to the Bundesliga second division. The days of Champions League victories, the days of dominating the Bundesliga, of winning everything in sight, had definitely been forgotten. 
Luckily, they bounced straight back into the Bundesliga, but the drop down a division hit the club hard and some of its star players that had come through the academy were sold on and left the club. For the next season, the club consolidated his position in the Bundesliga, but this was a team now fighting for relegation and with no hope in sight. Things had to change. Now with the old board of Rummenigge, Beckenbauer, Hoffner and Hunus gone, in came a new board led by visionary Stefan Deflop. With massive pressure from some of the club's biggest shareholders, he knew something had to change. He knew he could no longer bring in the big names. He knew that the club had another 12 years of the transfer ban, but something had to change. He was sick and tired of Bayern Munich being the laughing stock of German football. Then he remembered, there was once a head coach, a manager, a manager who took Stockport County from non-league football to the championship. He then took Huddersfield Town from the championship to Premier League and European glory. Now legend has it that this maverick of a manager has spent the last 20 years in the football manager monastery in Tibet, becoming one with the game and honing his managerial skills. And that manager was Bud FM. Born in Manchester, England, but with German family, this was surely the head coach Bayern Munich needed. Surely, even after 20 years out of the game, this man still had the skills to turn young players into world-class stars. Surely, he was the man to bring some glory back to Bayern Munich. Detloff knew that he had to convince Buda Fem to become the Bayern manager and after intense negotiations and the offer of a massive paycheck, Bud FM decided to sign on as the new head coach of Bayern Munich. Now Bud FM could not wait to get on that training pitch with his new players, relishing in the challenge that he had to work with what he's got. Now can Bayern Munich really rely on Bud FM? Is he the head coach that will bring back some glory to Bayern Munich, to the Allianz Arena? gonna find out in this series because Bayern are booed or bust. Hello and welcome to episode one, the introduction of my new series, Bayern Bud or Bust. I'm Bud FM and thank you for checking it out. Hopefully you stay with it. Um, right, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, intro montage movie. Um, just a bit of fun, I enjoyed making it. I wanted to build this save around a story. Um, and the reason I've done it mainly is because, well, I wanted to go to Germany. I wanted to be a big club, but I don't want an easy save with a big club. I wanted a challenge. Um, I used to talk to someone who had the similar, well, we came up together with this kind of format and he didn't really use it properly. And I used to think to myself, such a great idea and I'm gonna keep that for me. So that's what I've done. And I think this is a perfect time of year to do this because I'm a content fan like you and we've watched a lot of big teams. We've all probably seen someone take a small team through the leagues and we've seen a lot of the best players. We've seen a lot of the wonder kids that be developed and all different kinds of series. And I just want to do something different. I mainly want to make a little a world that's just ours, mine and yours. These players are just ours. No one else is going to have these guys because um, obviously they're all regen. So we'll get to learn together. Plus, I've got the transfer ban. Pushes me right out of my comfort zone. I can't buy anyone, uh, sign any freebies, can't even loan anyone. Um, so we're stuck with these guys. We've got to try and keep all of them and add to it with the young players and uh, mould them into a team that can maybe win some at one day. With now what, nearly 20 years into the future-ish? Um, I'm 57. I don't look bad for 57. I don't smoke and I wear sun cream. Um, good advert for that. But uh, I'm excited about this because like I said, it pushing me out of my comfort zone. It's going to be a real challenge. I'm um, really going to have to focus hard more than I have done before on training these players, honing in on specific attributes, um, tutoring where I can. Um, getting game time wherever I can for these lads because like any game this is just a computer game and I've played it for over 20 years and I think you play a game enough on the Xbox that is um, you get good at it and I'm good at this game so I really want to do something that makes it hard and I think this is it so hopefully you're going to enjoy this you're going to come on a ride with me and my uh, new Bayern Munich team and if you're new and this is the first time you've ever seen me on my channel 
feel free to subscribe because hopefully this is going to be a cracking series. I might not win anything, but who cares? It's going to be fun. Right, we have got a lot to look at. We're going to have no live comm today. Um, we're just going to look at a few things. I'll show you a few of my best players. Uh, in the next episode, we'll have the first game of the season. And I'm going to show you what I've got in the first team squad. I'm going to show you what I'm training them on. And then as each episode goes on, um, we're going to look at everything in more detail, like the under-19s, the staff, so on and so on. Um, so we'll just get through it bit by bit. And I'm hoping each episode might be a bit smaller. This one might not be. But going forward, this hopefully will be a bit smaller than my Booty in the Hood series. So, got a few things to look at. I'm excited. Let's get going. Right, here we are on my profile page. Um, you'll see my favourite formation there, one up top. If you know me, you're going to know that's going to hurt. But there's a reason why we'll be mainly playing with one striker. Um, I think I'm on about 30 odd grand a week, yeah. And... You know, skill-wise, I've gone for it. I'm a good coach. I've made myself a good coach because I'm 57, and I'm not. I'm no. I've got no intention of developing myself and going to college and doing them courses because a 57-year-old should not be doing that. And here's my welcome from the chairman and the club. And um, I'm buzzing about this. Uh, I've got a new chairman. It's obviously a Regen chairman, uh, Mr. Detloff. Hopefully, he's a good chairman and he's patient because he's going to need it because it's going to be well at this. Now it's giving me a bit of a background here about Bayern and some of them trophies are obviously more than the are in real life and that's because for the first few years of the holidaying, um, even after the transfer ban took place, they were still winning things, they still had a really good good squad but if you can see that, I mean they've won so many trophies, this club was the biggest club in Germany, if not one of the biggest clubs in the world so to see them fall this much, it's sad. Well, that's the whole point. I mean, under these really um, tight restraints, can we really do something? I mean, I'll see one in a DFB Pokal as a freaking awesome thing. And like he says, just give him whatever you want. Give him whatever you want because we need it. So hopefully, this is something the computer wouldn't do. It'd be sensible. I'm not sensible. We've got no need to scrape on any kind of money. Um, if we can spend it, let's spend it. Hopefully, this will give the guys the incentive to just give me that extra inch and hopefully keep us in this league and me in a job. Here we are with the expectations and this shows you exactly where Bayern Munich are these days and all they're bothered about is avoiding automatic relegation. <laughs> That's it. As long as I can stay in this league and not go into the, uh, I think it's a relegation playoff, I think, um, we'll be fine. And uh, when it comes to the Pokal, all they want is a third round. So hopefully both of them will be achievable this year. Right, onto the facilities page. And the Allianz Arena now is a good, well, it's, quite old now, it's 25 years oldish, something like that. Um, but it's now a 100,000 seat stadium with, what's it got? Oh no, sorry, 86 seater, but it's 100,000 altogether. Beautiful stadium. And um, we share it with 1816 Munchen, Munich. Um, it can change color, can't it? It's an amazing stadium. Um, luckily, it looks like the club have been concentrating on keeping them facilities high. We've got excellent training facilities, superb youth facilities. Right, let's have a look at the landmarks and yeah. Look back in the early days, they were still winning things, cups and leagues. Um, you can see some there, some of the old classic players. And then as years have gone on, they've obviously got, not got as good, but they've, they've lost a lot of cups still, even when they would have had a, an average team. I mean, two Pokal finals, uh, they got to the Europa League final, lost that. I mean, that's sad. I mean, you can see Stefan uh, Detloff became the chairman in 2033, so he's been the gaffer now for, for three years. They became Bundesliga 2 champions. That is, that is crazy that they went down. Here's my predecessor list. And there's some good names there originally. I mean, they had Ancelotti. Obviously, he went. And once he went, that's when the team started to get weaker. Just through age and retirement, um, Zidane came in. He was there for a year, nearly two. Got sacked. Um, Jurgen Klopp came in. He was there for two years. He struggled as well. He left. I think he became German Germany manager, um, which he's not now. Uh, some other guys, Pochettino there, obviously. John Brooks. Do you know John Brooks? Is he a regen? Not a clue. Um, some of the other guys above that. Dijan Lovren, he's um, his defender and he's got sacked. Now here we are on the history page. Again, you can see all the trophies at the top. But if you have a look at that chart there, and as I'm talking, it will be changing, showing you where they went. Um, Obviously, dip down a bit, they finished second. They had a good, what, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years where they were, you know, fighting up there, fifths and sixths and just missing out on Champions League, but still, you know, a fairly big club. And then it just went, something must have happened. And it just, maybe they lost some players, uh, maybe the quality wasn't coming through. Um, 
and they just nosedived straight into the second division um, bounced straight back up and then obviously we've now finished last year they were 14th um, 14th mid-table is my kind of target this year but here we are with the history of the Bundesliga and obviously we won a couple of leagues there and then the bank kicked in 17-18 um, and they went on and won the league what one two three times late after that they even got a runners up a few years later but since we've obviously slipped down it's Dortmund Dortmund are definitely the number one team in Germany now now looking at the DFB Pokal uh, history and again Dortmund have won a few but a couple other teams have won, won them there aren't they I mean Gladbach and stuff so and other teams have got to the final teams you wouldn't necessarily say are massive teams that are probably around the same level we are now um, that's what gives me hope that I might be able to win something here we are on the odds page and we've been predicted to finish 13th I know I can do better than that I mean I don't always look at that and say that's gospel because um, with Huddersfield in my last series sometimes I got predicted to finish like 13th 15th I think once um, and we finished fifth so I know anything can happen but this is going to be solid because the Bundesliga is now ranked um, the second highest league in the world behind the Premier League I think it's just good to look at this because it shows you the top six teams in Germany and the top six German players um, and we haven't got anything on that and I don't even think we've got anyone in the squad nope we haven't um, hopefully we can change that we've got some guys with some promise you know we've got some decent players I mean in the next episode I'm really going to go through them all and show you them all in detail for now though um, I'm just going to show you my top five players so you know s sort of what we've got to work with um, but yeah I think that's another goal of mine is to get a couple of players in the national team right and as I've just shown you we're not a top six club in Germany so I just thought I'd have a quick look at where we are in Europe what are we these days seeing as we've been out the out of Europe probably for a long time now and we're still 26 that's not too bad when you think of how many big clubs and how many clubs are in Europe every year and um, I mean there used to be a top three I suppose but um, that's better than I thought it was going to be now when it comes to the staff I can't buy any players but I can sign staff um, and if it's my one advantage I'm taking it now I've probably kept a couple of the guys and I mean a couple of guys the rest I got rid of and I've gone full out trying to get the best I can get now some of the best ones are never going to come the main thing they said to me was we don't want to work with the level of player you've got somewhere along them lines basically your players are shit we're not coming um, but I've still managed to get some pretty good guys i um, got a new assistant manager who I'm happy with I've got a great um, head of youth which is important because he's going to be bringing me guys in um, on the youth intake I've gone for all out, I've got fitness coaches, goalkeeping coaches, I've got all areas of my training covered to a really decent standard to the point when if you look at every single category now on the training coach page with the best, best at goalkeeper training, best at fitness training, best at technical training, best at defender training, so on and so on because if that's something I can do, that's what we need, we need any kind of help, any kind of edge we can get, we need so hopefully that's going to be um, a good thing for me same with the medical staff, I've maxed them out, got the best I can get um, and we've got the best medical staff in the league too. Now, scouts, originally I thought, I don't need scouts, I might have one scout, if I'm interested to know how good a player is I can at least scout him. Um, but then I remembered sometimes when you have a youth intake, you'll get youth players won't you from affiliate clubs or because some guys, you've got someone on your staff who's Spanish and you'll end up with a little Spanish player, so I thought, Do you know what, it can't hurt to have a wide knowledge, as many nationalities on the staff as possible. Now talking of the training, um, something I never do, and I'm still not going to do that, is my team training. Um, my assistant can do that. I mean, I might do it now and again, but that really don't bother me. I always concentrate on individual, that's something I quite like doing. Um, make a list in my pad, <laughs> and I'm really going to target them. I've done it before with Booed in the Hood, and even with Stockport County, SOS Stockport County. Um, but sometimes I'll take me out of the ball and it'll be four months before I've checked in. On this series, every month I will be checking in. And if they've improved, I'm either going to have to make a judgment. Shall I keep them tra training, tackling, for instance, or shall I move it on to positioning? Um, I'm going to judge that as the series goes on. Um, but as you can see there, I've got everything covered to a decent standard, a really good standard. And we've got the best coaching team in the Bundesliga. Right, and here is my squad. A lot of these guys are going to be with us from the start of this series all the way to the very end. You don't know who they are now, but hopefully as time goes on, a lot of these guys are going to become cult heroes. Like I said in the next episode, I'm going to go through my first team, show you what they're like, show you what I'm training them on, because a lot of them I'm training in new positions, um, I'm, I'm targeting specific things that I think will help the game, um, trying to add things to the game as well, so hopefully we can 
do this I'm excited for it um, and I mean if you look at that there you'll see I've got a lot of guys with good star ratings but that's just relevant to your squad um, but we've got some good players we're lacking in certain areas of the team and uh, I'll talk about that in a bit I mean well my centre halves I'm a bit worried about um, we've got some good fullbacks, got good keepers uh, got some decent wingers um, decent attacking midfielders I've got the odd striker that's okay I've got a striker with some promise We've just got no world beaters and you can tell that by the value. I think the most expensive player in my squad is worth 13 million. This top five is in no particular order, but we're going to start with Rene Ben. That's what we're calling him. And, and he's my best striker. And he's, what, 20 years old. So he's got room for, a major room for improvement. And I think he could become very good. Um, he's the most valuable player in my team. Um, as you can see, he's on 300 grand a week. Now, my theory behind this, and let me know what you think, is... Hopefully, if I pay the guys double what they're worth, I can afford it. Hopefully, when a team comes in, if it really gets to the point where I've got to let that player speak to that team, that team's going to come in and offer them 100 grand a week, and they're going to go, nah, I'm on 300 grand here. Might not always work, but it might do. Also, in every single contract, I don't know if you do this anyway, but I always do this anyway. I'm definitely doing it now. There's an option where you can say optional extra years by club and that means it's your choice not the players your choice and um, sometimes it's one two luckily on this they've all been three years and i've added that to everyone's contract so when they, they sign a four-year deal it comes to an end i can add a year on add a year on add a year on it's technically like a seven-year contract next up is mariano bukowski um, uncle book i'm gonna nickname him uh, 19 years old and i like this lad left winger um, well, he's a midfielder left. I'm training him as an attacking midfielder. Um, but yeah, he's good, isn't he? I think he's all right. I mean, he's rapid. His pace could be better. He's determined. Decent crossing. Hopefully, at 19, he's got, what, five years of improvement? Next up is Philip Felgenhauer. Um, he's attacking midfielder central, and that's where we're playing. Um, but he's, he's handy. He can cover out wide as well. Uh, 22, so he's got a bit more room for improvement. Hopefully, I mean, his potential ability and his current ability are matched. But... I think maybe we can do something, maybe he'll improve. Next is my goalkeeper, or one of my goalkeepers. Um, we've got like an older goalkeeper called Goetzer, um, who's been the number one. But then I've got Fawless, that's what we're calling him, Fawless. Um, now he's 23, so he's still got a good few years to, to improve as a goalkeeper. Um, and he's not that far behind him, so my thinking is, play this lad instead of the old guy. Let's get this guy game time, like I did with Jordan Pickford in the last series. He's the, he's the future. Next up is Nico Werner. Now he's one of my older boys. Both of my good fullbacks are in the 30s, um, but obviously he's a lifetime Bayern man. You know what I mean? He's missed the club. Um, and I like him, he can cover on the right back as well. He can play wing back and all. Um, but he's probably my best left back. Now I have luckily got two decent young ones and I'll show you them in the next episode, but Hopefully I've got a bit of experience at the back, especially with my full backs. Yeah, I've got a bit of experience and I'm going to need that this year massively. Right now, when it comes to tactics, the first two series, I've got my tried and tested tactic, my asymmetric 4-4-2. I love it. Um, I, I'm one of the managers that sticks to my guns and I get the players to fit it. If you can't change to fit it, I'll sell you and I bring in players. Now, I can't do that. Um, I ain't got loads of strikers, so I've basically kept the same tactic. I've tweaked it a touch. And I've obviously gone one up top. That hurts me. But I've gone one up top. Hopefully it's okay. Um, but this is going to be my main tactic. My other two tactics, we keep in the wall. You should remember that from the last series. Hopefully we're going to need, well, we're probably going to need it a lot more in this series. It's a shutdown tactic, super defensive. Uh, hopefully if I'm like hanging onto a lead against Borussia Dortmund, I might be able to switch to the wall for the last five minutes and keep that lead. Um, so yeah, we're keeping the wall. And then my last tactic is the strikerless tactic. And obviously the thought behind this was, I haven't got a lot of strikers. I've wanted to use a strikerless tactic for a while. I quite like him. Um, I've got a good friend, The Reckonist. I'll put a link down to his Twitter down below. He does uh, Twitch, um, Prince Tactics and Guides and stuff. He's a really, really good guy. Um, check him out. Um, this is his tactic. I've, I've changed the odd thing to it, I'll be honest with you. Um, but it's a good tactic and it's not done that bad in pre-season I'll be honest so these are the three we're going with into this first year now here we are with the overview of the squad now you can pause this if you want and have a look at it in more detail but I mean some of it I can't do it about it'll say oh you're not very strong in a certain area tough 
I can't do out. Um, but you know, I've got there's some good things. You've got some good strengths um, and a lot of weaknesses. This is going to be possibly the hardest save I've ever had in my football manager career. Right then, pre-season, and as you can see, the lovely Holger has joined us today. We've got Holger, we've got Helga, um, we've got Sharon, Tracy, we've got loads of them. They're going to be joining us this year because I'm not going to be making a big highlights package. It takes a lot, a lot of time to make, um, and I'm, I'm going to spend less time doing this. I've got a baby boy, you know what I mean? So I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way, and we're just going to quickly run through fixtures each episode while Holger reveals them for you. Can't grumble with that. Um, so as you can see with the pre-season, it was a big pre-season. All these games, the computer had already arranged. Um, apart from the Bayern 2 one, they asked you that at the start. I just said, yeah, have a look what's what. Um, I added one game, which you could probably tell which game I added. <laughs> yeah, got beat. Um, Man United, that was already on it. Um, but we had some good results. Now, I tried both tactics. I tried my new one. We tried the strikerless one. And both worked really well. I mean, the strikerless one's better than you think. Now, I have played the first game of the season, the first official game, and that was in the first round of the DFB Pokal Cup. Um, we played some team I have never heard of, and we tonked them 7-1. Great result. Built a lot of confidence up, so I'm really happy with that. But in the next episode, we're going to come back uh, with the very first live comment of the series, and we're going to play Leverkusen at home at the Allianz Arena. Leverkusen are one of Germany's biggest clubs. Um, they won the title a couple of years ago, so it's, it's a big game. It's going to be hard. We're probably going to get beat, but hopefully... The lads will entertain you in the next episode. Right then, that's it. That's the end of episode one, the introduction. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, I just wanted to show you what was going on, what's been happening over the last 20 years. Show you a few things. Um, like I said, though, as the series goes on, we're going to look at things in more detail. If you're into that thing, we're going to have a look at each player. Um, some of the younger players I'm excited to show you. Because um, we've got a bright future. If I do it right, we've got a bright future. I'm so excited for this series. It's a bit different. Hopefully you're going to be excited too. Um, and come on this journey because hopefully this is going to take me straight to FM18. Can't wait. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for checking this out. Hopefully you'll stick around if you're not new. Hopefully if you're one of my original subs, you're going to stick with it and love it. Um, smash that like button. Help me out. Let's get the, the let's spread the word of Bay and Budo bust out there. And, and and like I said before, if you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe. Right. Have a nice day. Take care. Alfie the same.